Columbia River Gorge, beautiful spring day, and this is uh, the toy store once again. Yeah, back to our toys. Now, your side of the table is a little more densely populated than mine. So let me just tell you about my latest love, Roly Twin Lens Reflex. We have a whole separate segment on this, so I'm not gonna say much about it, other than I'm returning to my roots. Um, I worry about <laughs> you, I really but do. Don't worry too much. I'm just, I love black and white. Uh, I wanted to, after 15 years, get back to uh, rolling my own processing film, do it in my kitchen sink. Uh, the segment that we're gonna have on the Roly shows me, Chris has filmed me uh, um, processing film at home and the scanning. Uh, but I like the process. I like the beauty, the mechanicalness of uh, the Roly. I used one for years when I worked for CBC television and for the film industry, shooting stills on film sets and TV sets. Silent, almost silent, um, leaf shutter, only camera that could be used on a live film set. And uh, so uh, this is a new camera. This was just built within the last year or so. Oh, it's okay. the end of the line. It's a it's beauty. You can use the old logo on it. And yeah. You know, it's funny when when we were back in the '70s and I guess even the '80s. When I think about it, we were a lot of twin lens reflex work. Um, I I worked with the Raleigh Flex for a while, but moved over to the Mamiya C330 line just because of interchangeable yeah, lenses. Yeah, you know, it, it was so clever. I mean, it was like. It had like a, a spring-loaded little lever. You'd pick it up, drop a lens in, lock it back in, and you're, you're off shooting again. Yeah. Um, just brilliant. totally different. And this one also has a prism finder, I believe you can have, yeah. and the other ones do. So, you know what? My hat's off to you. Have fun. <laughs> you know, I still worry a lot about you. Uh, you're slipping. But, you know, there's no gray hair alerts or whatever they call those out there yet for you. But, we'll, we'll, you know, you'll see that on Luminous Landscape. Silver <laughs> alert someday. Michael's gone over the edge. Well, well anyway, more I'm power having, to I'm you. I'm having fun. You know what? You are having fun, and it's a lot of fun to see you having fun. And it's just like so unreal that the balance of everything is on this side now. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay, so what what new contemporary uh, gear do you have for us today? Well, I, I brought a lot of things that we've been using and playing and looking at, and um, we might as well start off with a um, possibly most useless, okay, kind of like why uh, products. And um, I recently saw this um, in a, a magazine article, a photo magazine of all things, and mm -hmm. this is a LaCie mirror drive. Now mirror you have to drive. ask her, mirror drive. Oh, mirror drive, so in other words, it records two copies. Oh, no, no, no. no. it mirrors. No. no, you can see yourself. Oh, that's really helpful. And it has, comes in a, with a, a wooden tray. Yeah. And you can put it in the tray. Yeah. And it sits on your desk and you put a pencil. Yeah. And it has a braided USB cord, braided, not not rubberized. Look at that, that's braided, just like. That's nice, I like I that. I mean, being retro, that's yeah, how like, no, like electric that. wires and houses used to be. I like that. Now, I, this, this may be a very fine drive. I'm sure the electronics are the same as other yeah. Lassie drives, which are very good. But frankly, this is about as useless <laughs> as those Hasselblad you know, remodels of Sony cameras from three years ago. Yeah, I like wonder the if they Stellar got Stellar and all of yeah, those I wonder pieces. If they are they crap. got the leftover wood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the leftover wood from the pistol grips. But it does come with a polishing cloth and. Oh, is that ever? If you position it properly on your desk, that you is remind, so useless. You can remind yourself who you are. <laughs> anyway. All right. Um, I've got I've got a shiny drive as well, except mine's useful. <laughs> okay. This isn't quite a mirror finish but it's a one terabyte solid state. Mm. And this one is called, is made by a company called Oyen Digital, and it's called the Shadow Mini. And it's expensive, it's about $600, solid state drives, big solid state drives are still expensive, uh, but it's a one terabyte USB 3, and it's very rugged and weighs almost nothing, and uh, comes with a little pouch and a USB 3 cable, and I've been using it now for about six months. I took it to Antarctica, uh, several other trips, and I love the fact that they're super fast, super reliable, and um, no, you're taking two of these, if I remember correctly. One that you put like in your briefcase, one you throw in your suitcase. Exactly. These are your backup. My other, my other drive is not a solid state. Okay. But what I do when I travel is I have two full copies of everything I've shot on a shoot. 
one on one of these drives, one on a second drive like this. I put one in my briefcase, I put one in my camera bag, and if I've worked on my files, I take my selects and I put them in the hard drive of my laptop. So, uh, triple redundancy. Well, I go one step further, is if I have enough SD cards or CF cards, depending on what format I'm shooting with, I turn those over and I use those. I don't reformat them right. if I don't have to, considering you get a few thousand um, images per 32 gig, 64 gig card, yep. versus what, what do you get, 12? 12, 12, <laughs> 12 frames yeah. at a dollar a piece. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're very, both very big on, on our backups. This is the newest uh, LaCie drive. It's uh, rugged, it's the newest rugged. It does come with a Thunderbolt cable wrapped around it, plugged right in, mm -hmm. and it does have a USB 3, so uh, you can use USB 3 too. So once again, you know, I've always been a firm believer in the ruggeds. I've got stacks of these things. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and much like yourself, I, I back up. I also use the, uh, the Western Digital versions of, um, they have what, the four terabyte, you have one of those, yep. and you can um, mirror the drives. There's two drives kind of stacked mm -hmm. on top of each other in a nice package. and. Um, that's another one I take with me quite often too. So The nice thing about drives these days is notwithstanding the fact that solid state are expensive, but regular spinning disks have become so inexpensive. Yes. You, can, you can almost treat them like long-term storage. So you can go out on a shoot, come back from a trip, have 10,000 images on a drive, and just put the drive on the shelf. That's what, that's what yeah. I said, this guy gets stacks yeah. of them. You know, exactly. and, and I label them, you know, they're nice. I have, right now, it's just got my name and phone number on here, but usually if I fill one of these things up or use it as a backup, you know, I either write yeah. right on it with a magic marker or tape like a, a piece of directory, you know, print, do a print out of the directory and tape it to it. So, you know, five years from now, I can yeah. remember what's on it. Anyway, there's a lot we can talk about on those things. Mm -hmm. Let's get into some camera gear, because that's always fun. Um, we talk a lot about mirrorless uh, these days. Uh, we're both into the Fuji X-T1 system. I've left mine at home because the other mirrorless I do a lot of playing with is the uh, Sony, and I have the Sony a7 II, which is I've been using on this trip. Yep. And I'm really beginning to like things, other than the idiosyncrasies of um, a poorly laid out Sony menu. cameras idiosyncratic? <laughs> really? <It's, laughs> and we've covered oh some God. of that yeah. previously. <laughs> Once you get used to it, though, it's. It's a pretty slick they're, system. They're starting, though. It's been a few years now, and uh, they're on about the third or fourth generation, and they finally have figured out how to, you know, do things reasonably sensibly. Uh, not bad. So some of you that are, are using the Sony system uh, may already know a lot of these little things I'm going to show, but they're just kind of fun things to talk about. Um, the first one is a little lens I found. It's a 16 millimeter 2.8 fisheye. Mm -hmm. um, it's for the A series, so you have to get one of the adapters on. L E A three or four, or, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Here. But yeah, EA four. EA four. That's the latest one. And it does have um, a tripod socket on. So if you even had like when we do our 150 to 600 millimeter Tamrons. Exactly. Yeah, we can either mount it there or yeah. use the, the Tamron sleeve. But this gives really an incredible view. And it's not something you'd use that often, but it's kind of fun to take in to like a room or something with you know tight quarters, a stairway, and it just kind of like does some fun now, stuff. Now it's not with, a circular fisheye. No, it's, it's, it's a, kind of a what super they call wide rectangular fisheye fish fish yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun to play with. It's not too expensive. Rectilinear, I think that's called. It even yeah. comes with uh, built-in filters. There's an A12 filter, a normal, and a B12 filter put oh, in, cool. and you just kind of pull that back and rotate it. Not that I've even bothered to work with it, but. Yeah, you know, it's kind of right. fun. That it's if there. you were shooting black and white film, that would be handy. Uh -huh. Well, maybe just figure out a way to stick it on there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is kind of a, a fun little lens. One of the things that uh, recently I've just gotten, this is the Sony a7 II with the battery grip, and mm -hmm. really right stuff is uh, just recently released the uh, L bracket, and they're getting much, much smarter. And of course, one thing I really like uh, about really right stuff, and, and Tom does a great job with his guys in engineering, is that you know they listen to their their users. And two things that uh, we've always complained about is that we don't have or can't find the Allen wrench when you want it. Yeah. And now they build the Allen wrench right into the base and you can basically take an Allen wrench out and then drop it back in and there's like a little tiny, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, magnet in here. So essentially, you know, you've always got that is the so Allen clever. wrench in there. Thank you. That is, that is so <laughs> clever. And many of us have, uh, uh, and we've talked about this previously, work with the, the this is the Black Rapid straps, or yeah. you know, there's a number of different brands on the market. 
And the problem with their earlier L brackets is they were just L brackets and no place to, yep. to put it. Now you can keep the L bracket on the camera and you know either screw a, a, a tripod socket on or use one of these. Um, so no, that's clever. So you really never have to take it off. No, and you know you can you can change batteries very easily the way they've carved it. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I was using the cable release yesterday, you can pop the cable uh, the, the the packet off and, and use the the cable release. So now this is specific to the A72. A A72 because it's a different okay. battery grip and everything along yeah, those lines. Yeah, of course. Lines. So for the A, I imagine they have one for the A7R. A7. I, well, yes, but I'm not sure how whether it's got all the new oh, refinements okay. in it. Right. Um, since I don't have the A7R quite yet. And on this uh, Sony camera today, the A72, I have what I think is probably finally Sony's finest lens, prime lens for uh, their cameras. I've got the 35 millimeter. F14. Uh, F14 on here. Um, I think Sony is coming around. You know, uh, with the release of the A72, mm -hmm. uh, they finally got the whole concept of at least the ergonomics down. Mm -hmm. um, menus is a whole different story. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but now with the ergonomics down and um, uh, all the number of other things they put in here, such as in body uh, image stabilization. Uh, they've got a, a real good mm -hmm. um, system. And they're now designing lenses for that. And this is a prime. Um, it's a 35 1.4 yeah. with an f-stop ring. That, okay, let me just say, I shot with this in Cuba in March. I got a sample from Sony to test. And number one, I think it's a phenomenal lens in terms of its image quality. So that's a given. It's a, it's a Zeiss. It's a Sony Zeiss. The aperture ring is just, thank you, Sony. So cool. <laughs> thank you, I'm just, the, when the world went away mm -hmm. from aperture rings to wheels, I think we lost something. Mm -hmm. And now that we can have aperture rings again, I, I just think to be able to look at the camera, see the position of, of you know, ah, what can I say? Thank you, Sony. You built a beautiful lens. It's a little heavy. It's a bit expensive for what it is, uh, but it's brilliant. I think optically, it is one of the best Sony Zeiss lenses produced. And we'll that, have, a, we'll have a, nice. a separate report on it. It also, I, I think, has a really clever thing to switch for the on-off click. So you can actually, if you're doing, I suppose that was if you were doing video, uh, people. video people or yeah. something, you have uh, no indents or, or That's whatever That's right, we no, call it, no so. detente. Uh, yeah, so in other words, you've got a smooth aperture. It's, it's, That's very clever as well. So. It's a, it's a super lens. I think that if they continue to bring out more lenses of this type, uh, they've got a real winner. So the, 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 the image quality, like you said, has just been astounding. I mean, I've tried to put it through a whole slew of different tests. Uh, I shot in Pike Market in Seattle the other day, and I shot a lot at 1.4 where you know, I would get one flower in focus. And just to be able to see how that depth of field works and everything is so amazing. And um, I, I'm just really beginning to really like shooting with that. Uh, of course, you know, they have a lot of nice convenient lenses out there. Another thing that I like, and of course when I go out shooting, um, you and I have both have uh, shoulder bags that we've been using for many, many years. You, they're not really even camera bags, I guess. Um, no. Mine I got from Tilly, but they don't make it any longer, right. you know, the hat company Tilly. And I don't remember where you got yours. I don't know, I have one I bought somewhere years ago. It's just an old canvas bag, yeah. but. Um, I buy a lot of stuff from a company called Travelsmith, mm -hmm. and um, I, I've been looking, always looking for the ultimate camera bag. Um, I'm somewhat addicted. Uh, it's like some people with shoes, right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, this is called, I believe, it's called PackSafe, and uh, it's specifically made for uh, amateur enthusiast street photographers. And it's like, if you could walk the streets of Europe, you could carry your camera around your neck, or you can even carry it in here. And wait till I show you some of the cool features on this. Obviously, you've got a nice water bottle feature on the back, another pocket over here, things that you can hang. But they make this, number one, so it's um, IRF-centric, meaning um, uh, you, if you had a passport in there, somebody couldn't read it. It's got like a... Oh, you know, it blocks the uh, uh, near-field yeah. uh, RF. They've got all sorts of clever locks on here. Um, so if you wanted to, and you didn't want anybody to break in, oh, let's see. You, Turn around. Okay. you could uh, lock the uh, the zippers down, and you can see these are cut-proof metal uh, oh, chains. Yeah, that's clever. What I have in the outer pocket, you have plenty of room. You carries an iPad, so if you're doing right. street magnification, but you know you have all sorts of pockets for other things and Velcro stuff in here. 
Nice. Um, so I, I really like the fact that you could do a, an iPad in there, and it's and it's padded, so it's somewhat protective. Um, it's iPadded. iPadded. The other thing is it's got a double zipper kind of pull on here, and if to open it up, you kind of just pull the double zipper. Oh, okay. And of course, it's got Velcro too. Right. And inside, there's plenty of room. Right now, I've got uh, three lenses. Got the 16 to 35. So let's see in there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's got a flip over pad, so you can actually put a camera with the lens in there if you want. I have it configured, so if I went out on the street right now, I could go out on the street with this pack, not weighing very much, and have a four lens system. What's on the camera, and carry my other three lenses, which would be normally a 24 to 70, a 16 to 35, and a 70 to 200. That so, is very clever. Very, very nice. All high quality. Yeah, no, you know, everything material. is just yeah. You know, beautifully set up. What does this sell for? Ninety-nine dollars. Well, that's not bad. And it's from Travelsmith, the uh, uh, the travel company. So, right. Um, I, I've been comfortable with it. And the other thing I like about it is it doesn't hang from the center. It hangs from right. the back edge. It's a little padded back here too. So, you know, if it's rubbing against your hip and you've got lenses in there, it's not just you know the lens mounts and everything banging into you. So, it's a, a very comfortable little system. Adjustable straps. Uh, everything is set so that it can't be stolen. You can't like just slice through this. There's mm -hmm. steel. There's a steel braid going through there. Yeah, I can feel that. So you, wow. you just can't have somebody come and yeah. you know try to slice it and run with it. This part has bothered me a little bit because as I've used it, it, it tends to twist, and there's got to be a way to fix it. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I haven't found anything that I've uh, not liked about this, and uh, it's been pretty cool. Right. It's so relatively new still, but pack it's safe. Pack from safe. Travel Smith. Travel Smith. Very cool. Yep. And because you had something in a leather bag earlier, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I, I'm always about having a camera with me. And uh, we've recently started putting stuff about having an iPhone up on the forum, and sure. it raises eyebrows here and there. But the point is, it's a camera, no matter which way you look at it. It's all about the photography. It's all about having that camera there. You and I, you might not be as big into iPhone as I am, but I, I, we both use them. Oh, and, yeah. Sure. You know, it's sit down at breakfast and the, see the sunrise. We're I photograph pull. my breakfast every morning. <laughs> <laughs> that, that silver alert's coming quicker than we <laughs> expect. So, this is my X100T. Oh, yeah. Beautiful quality. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very slick. Uh, I put a little... Um, thing from, I think it's a company called Loam or something, a little soft release on top here, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and also with this, I have um, these these cute little strap systems. A uh, company yeah, called makes that? Peak Design, right. I believe it's called, uh, Peak Design. Okay. And I'm very big on the modular straps. I hate straps, mm -hmm. I hate these eyelets. So this attaches with, you know, kind of a string. And this is their wrist strap. Right. And essentially you just kind of put the little disc in and you pull it down and it snaps into place. Clever. And to release it, you push the little yep. disc back. That looks very secure. And then if I wanted to, I could you know, put it around my neck. Now this is my social camera. With, I go to a museum, an opening, or out to dinner. Uh, you know, this is what I usually have mm -hmm. with me. I keep it in a leather pouch because I can put it in my briefcase when I travel, so yep. it's on the plane with me, or it's in the, you know, the car and so forth. So, and it's got an extra battery and a lens cleaning cloth I keep in here. Mm -hmm. This is actually an old Hasselblad bag. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is yeah, my- Yeah, it's like real leather. Yeah, it's quite nice wow. and works quite nicely. I'm sure you can find these on eBay. Sure. So uh, this is that nice little system that I work with. It's you know what, this cool. is, you've used this enough. It's now starting to wear a little bit. Oh, it feels great. Yeah, it? it's soft leather. It's great. So uh, that's kind of the- Okay, that's cool. Um, it's a leftover lens. This is your uh, this is my bag scale. weigher. Yeah, <laughs> well, everybody should have a bag weigher. Yeah. weigher. Mm -hmm. Once again, I got this from Travelsmith. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I usually get it because I've been lately weighing tripods and different things along that line. So if you're interested in what things weigh, but given that the airlines are now charging an arm and a leg for overweight bags. It really is worthwhile knowing before you get to the airport whether your bag is uh, going to be overweight. Coming down the home stretch. <laughs> this is always so much fun because, you know, this is something we, um, Nick, um, well, you and I saw this product when we were That's at, right, at Photokina. At Photokina, and we uh, ended up bringing one back and had Nick do a review. It's a unique ball. And I've had an opportunity to, to use it, and it's actually replaced. And I've got a lot of ball heads uh, and, and different tripod heads. The architect mm -hmm. uh, really writes stuff. The um, 
what's the one with the, the cube? Uh, Arca Swiss Arca cube. Arca Swiss cube. Uh, but this is a really nice head, very fast. You know, it, once again, it adjusts. So you it's know, a ball within a ball. It's kind of a ball in a ball, and it's kind of designed so that no matter which way your tripod was, you could level it off, and then, you know, this part would spin at, a, at the level. But the ball, it, it's just very versatile to use. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter which, you can go vertical pretty yeah. easily with it. Of course, most of us end up just using an L bracket and go vertical. Um, probably the one thing that I really have a pet peeve with is um, screw tight. Yeah. Uh, bracket clamps. So I, I, I really like, like the levers of the way to go. You know it's the way to go. Uh, but other than that, I, I am told that I could actually take this off and, and get the really right stuff on the stick on there. Yeah. So I've been really happy with it. It's not that heavy mm -hmm. and it really fits nicely on top it's of the. It's beautifully uh, made. I like the finish. Uh, you know, if you like the red, doesn't matter one uh -huh. way or the other. But uh, no, it's made in Hungary. Designed and made in Hungary, uh, and it's a very clever design. It, it's and it works, and it's been smooth. And I've had this in cold weather, and uh, it just it that's when you really can test the metal of a, oh, yeah. a ball head. Is Literally, there. you can test the metal of the metal. <laughs> yeah, the met, but it's metal, <laughs> metal. And last but not least, this is something that uh, this this is interesting. <laughs> I kind of keep my ear to the rail and you know hear what's hot and what's not. And this company called Three Legged Thingy, Three Legged Thing, has kind of come out of nowhere. And they're making a set of uh, travel tripods, which I find, or at least a founder, probably one of the more uh, well bit one, well built ones that I've seen. So this is uh, a case that it comes with, and this is a three legged thing. This tripod is a X2 uh, version. Looks nicely padded. It, it comes in a in a, a nice little kit, and there's plenty of room. I mean, you could wrap uh, you know, other things around inside it. It's got a little space on top of here where you could put extra heads, or mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it has. Um, uh, this is part of a. Uh, you can kind of make a monopod out of it, like I'm going to say. This is part of the monopod adapter, but you could right. put uh, extra plates in there. So it comes out, and it, it's built like that. It's really light. Feel how. Yeah, this carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. It's well well designed, in my opinion. And the way it works is you kind of screw the legs up. It flips out. It seems like a lot of work. You push these buttons in here. Yeah. And it locks into place. And then you can extend the legs. There are five section legs that mm -hmm. extend out. Um, I'm not a guy that's big on the center column, so typically right. I would bring the center column yeah. back down. If you have a center column up, you're basically using a monopod. Yeah. Uh, so I never use that, but uh, if you wanted that mm -hmm. extra six inches, you could have it. Uh, and everyone could use an extra six inches. <laughs> Even though this has been uh, fairly stable and our, our friend with us has been using this during this mm -hmm. trip, uh, they obviously think that if you, you can always hang your camera bag on here. Just give that you know, a little some extra, bit extra stability. Or what some people do, what I do sometimes, is I'll take a bungee cord put the bungee cord on there, and then step on the other end. So, but the, the slick thing is it turns into a monopod too. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you were just going out for the day and really didn't need it, you can unscrew this leg. It's the, the leg with the, the padding on it. Right. And then take the ball head off and uh, put it on here. Now this, they make their own ball heads. You can put any ball head you'd like on here. Uh, this is a very lightweight ball head. Uh, and it's your basics, you know, it's, you got the tightening of the, the ball and the whole 10 yeah. yards. So, right. but the point is, I, I travel a lot sometimes with, you know, two nights going mm -hmm. to New York City or something to do something and uh, take one of the, the things you can put in the overhead. This fits into to that, even though it might take up some space, you can still stick socks and underwear in here and <laughs> right. maybe use it wisely, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, no, that's very clever. Now, the issue is how much is this thing? It's 500, as you see right here. Uh, uh, carbon fiber tripod, uh, five legs, with the ball head? With the ball head. Uh, All right. It's not bad. It's a little pricey. But... It's it's pricey, but they must be selling them because you can't get them. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny these days. Uh, Chris and I were looking at a site, and they were making some very clever uh, devices for videographers. Um, you know, like a device that oh, folds out and you can stabilize yourself with it. You know, little things that screw on the bottom of the camera that will drive around and do all this cool stuff. And there's a lot of companies making neat stuff, but this company was doing it. And you can't buy this stuff. Everything's back ordered. You know, maybe six weeks we'll have it. It's kind of like buying an iWatch these days. <laughs> but right. uh, 
Uh, this one, uh, they're they're on back order, but they're you're talking three to four weeks delivery on it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I just thought I'd share it because I look for a system I can take with me. Yeah, it's not going to replace the big really right stuff uh, that I want, but if I wanted to go do a shot of. Uh, uh, Times Square, or go into a museum yeah, no, or a I church it. or something. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a nice little lightweight and bag. For someone who's take. a hiker, yeah, I or, could see, you know, very very nice as a hiking tripod. Um, no, it's a clever design. So uh, that's kind of our... our that's it? Our, well, it's kind of a lot, isn't it? Yeah, well, you, you haven't talked about your... Oh, this is a this is the, the Luminous Landscape hat. Um, of course, if you come on any of our workshops, you get one of these hats. So. <laughs> Uh, and uh, as you know, we've been uh, working very hard on uh, changing the, the website, working very hard on adding new features. And, um, yeah, but you, you, can't, you can't really have a, a restyled business without a hat. No, and um, yeah. you know, I like this hat. Yeah, it's it's got a cool hat. Endowment on one side. Mm -hmm. Rock Lansky, Hopper. Rock yeah. Hopper. And, you know, see? Oh, it looks good. Yeah. So, okay. you know, well, this has been fun. Now. This has been fun. Thank you. Maybe next time I'll have more new toys than you. Well, it'll probably involve film. I'll have my daguerre <laughs> no, my daguerreotype. <laughs> oh, just going, going backwards. Anyway, thanks, Kev, and thanks, and we'll see you guys on the uh, Luminous Landscape. It's fun as always. <laughs>